Fatalities for Skeleton Warriors. Alright, skeletons. A very common type of enemy in fantasy style games. Usually weak, low level enemies. But not in From Software's world. Whether it be the Roly Boys in Demon Souls, or the even Rollier Boys in Dark Souls. Heck, even the first skeletons in the graveyard bleed you out while constantly reviving, as they are essentially placed there to steer you in the opposite direction. However, in Elden Ring you have the opportunity to use them as your own personal skull servants. So you would think that they could mean trouble in large numbers. Not only can you summon them as spirit ashes, but there's also the tibia summon spell, and even the rose summons as of war. So, what would it be like to beat Elden Ring using only skeletons? And I mean actual full skeletons, not just skull or bone related items. As those are a dime a dozen. Well, to be upfront about it, this playthrough wasn't just a pain in the dick, it was a massive pain in the boner. I mean, there are some really cool looking but ridiculously underwhelming spells in this game, and I thought that after the Scarlet Ionia only run, I would not have to go through that much frustration ever again. But it turns out that the Tibia summons might in fact be the worst spell of them all. In fact, it makes the game borderline unplayable. And why is that? Well, it first of all has the properties that you would expect from any shitty spell, like how it has very low damage output, which means that you sometimes literally don't have enough attacks to defeat a boss. It also has high stat requirements to use it in the first place, a very slow casting speed that you cannot speed up in any meaningful way, but that's all coupled together with one inexcusable attribute that it lacks, namely tracking. The skeletons attack where the enemy was the moment you initiate this very slow casting animation. In fact, they can even spawn in mid-air. Yeah, it's surprising how a skeleton based spell makes no sense. So this means that any type of movement, like the natural movement of a boss moving towards you, in order to attack you, can already be enough to avoid the incoming skeletons. So that's where the spirit ashes come in. Because when a boss is distracted by your spirits, he might, but obviously not always, stand still long enough for you to hit him with the tibia summons. For, uh, well, shit damage in most cases. So you might say, why not just use the rosa summons then? That one is powerful, but that's exactly the problem, ironically. That the rosa summons is superior to the tibia summons in every conceivable way. In fact, it's really quite good, although it's a bit slow. However, nowhere near as slow as the tibia summons. So if I would go for effectiveness, then the run essentially makes no sense anymore, as I would just be Roses axing everything and ignoring the Tibia summons and the Spirit Ashes. So my goal was to only use the Roses X in the beginning, because you literally have to in order to acquire your other attacks, and then only use it in situations where it makes sense or if the game would essentially force me to. And uh, spoiler alert, that, uh, that occurred. Let me just put it like that. Because let me tell you that I never expected that a run which involves using summons would lead to my most frustrating Elden Ring challenge yet. Because when you are relying on a spell which acts like hitting your opponent with a flaccid penis and which makes other bad spells look godlike by comparison, be prepared to get completely boned. This is the Elden Ring Skeletons Only Challenge. Since we're focusing on intelligence as well as faith in this run, I simply started off as a level 1 character and then went through the usual hour and a half quest of collecting all the basics, one of the unfortunate downsides of the open world design of this game. However this time acquiring the spirit bell from Ultra Waifu was actually part of our setup. And given that I had no way to access the royal remains set at this point, 
I collected the skeletal mask that belongs to the raptor set. Also, an unfortunate part of this run is that I would require a lot of levels early on. So that means doing the ball farming over and over. But at least the Rose's Axe only requires 18 intelligence. And the Radicant Seal would take care of the strength requirement. So I went to the Black Knife Catacombs to collect the axe. And while I was there anyway, I also picked up Grave Glove Words to upgrade the Skeleton Ashes that I would soon acquire from the Tibia Mariner in Limgrave. Not exactly much of an obstacle, especially since I upgraded the axe to plus 3. And this is a low tier early mini boss. So my damage output was quite high. However, an unfortunate and ironic aspect of the Spirit Ashes is that the skeleton militiaman's damage output is rather limp. But that's not really what their function is to begin with. The rigid bones of these calcium comrades are meant for tanking. Although they are not that great at doing that either, however, being undead, they have the ability to become erect, to resurrect after getting killed, and as long as they don't get hit again during that process, or die from a holy attack, they can actually continuously come back. You would think that people die when they are killed, but that's not necessarily the case. I mean, hey, this entire franchise is about pseudo-immortality to begin with. However, it requires a lot of RNG, of course, for them to resurrect consistently. But it at least provides us a chance of success when using the Tibia summons, which we get from another Tibia Mariner on the Altus Plateau. Yeah, there's actually more than one iteration of the same boss in this game, fancy that. So I defeated this mini-boss and I acquired the Tibia summons. Yeah, lucky me. Because to reiterate, this spell is inferior to the Rose's summons in every conceivable way. And inferior to any other spell in any conceivable way. Literally, the only upside is that because it has high stat requirements to begin with, if we combine it with a high scaling staff and the intelligence crystal for the Physic Flask, we should at least be able to do decent damage against bosses that are scaled for early game. So that's something at least. But the damage output is going to drop off very quickly. Of course, defenses are still relevant as well, because of the extremely slow casting time, and the fact that I don't really have many levels to spare for HP, in fact not even for FP. So my other crystal would be the shield one from the Earthry avatar in the Weeping Peninsula. So as I said, for now our damage output is more than decent, especially with the skeletons distracting the boss, but we can also immediately see the RNG factor of their revival. First of all, this boss can deal holy damage, but even if that's not a hit that drained a skeleton's life bar, just one random hit before the resurrection process is complete is sufficient to prevent them from coming back. And when you're on your own, you have to choose your attacks very carefully. Because again, the casting speed is somewhere in the I cannot guarantee anything until Christmas tier. Anyway, an obvious method for increasing our damage output will be by adding certain talisman. And we can wear a second one after defeating Margot. Unfortunately, this is another boss with holy attacks, but just like the tree avatar, many attacks are purely physical. However, just like before, that doesn't necessarily even matter that much. And then, when I was left alone, I realized that I should have reallocated my flask, since I'm at base level mind, and this spell costs 20 FP per cast. Well, first of all, I didn't even survive, but even if I did, I would not have had enough attacks to take him down anyway. But even when you have enough FP, when exactly would it be safe to attack with a spell this slow? And without any hyper armor that would prevent the spell from being cancelled? And remember, this is not even remotely the quickest moving boss in the game. So that is exactly why our skull and bone subordinates are so vital when using this terrible spell. Almost! Oh, I need one more hit! Oh, this should give me a hit. Oh, I know it. Oh, he does do it. Good. Okay, now I should have him. Okay, nice. So, with Market down, we have the ability to equip a second talisman. Therefore, I went over to Rhea Lucaria for one of the spell boosting talismans. 
which actually doesn't do a whole lot. It's only a 4% increase. Regardless, we will get better ones later on. Now, fortunately, Godric is very easy to hit because he is one of the slowest moving bosses in the game. And that's a good thing because we will have to hit him a shit ton of times. See how quickly our damage output is already dropping off, even with an additional 4% boost. Regardless, because Godric is a slow and large target, not only would I not miss my attacks as frequently, but one of my summons was still alive in the second phase, providing me with a sufficient distraction to get a lot of damage in. And yeah, I suppose I should have given him the honor to finish off Godric near the end. Aw, he was so close. Well, anyway, at least that was a first try victory, which I didn't know yet at the time how much I would have to cherish that, given what was still ahead of me. Since that you never have enough bodies to bone with, I decided to acquire another spirit ash from yet another Tibia Mariner, namely the Skeletal Bandit. And despite it being a Skelly with benefits, well, benefit because he has more powerful attacks, but he's ultimately less successful at tanking hits simply by being all by himself, so I basically ended up only using him against the Red Wolf of Radagon. And although he performed well, and actually managed to inflict some damage, but then I ran out of healing flasks. And then the panic started. After all, if you give a dog a bone, this old man here is rolling, well not home per se, but kinda all over the place in a complete panic. He's too fast. God damn it. <laughs> Literally my last bit of health. Can't even hit him, come on. Yeah, I got him. Ooh. <laughs> wow, I did not uh, expect to survive this fight. I did not expect to, uh, to uh, survive this fight, but it worked out with that little bit of health. Yeah, I definitely got lucky there. And speaking of other spirit ashes, there's actually a third type of skeletal ashes, namely the putrid corpses. Which I never picked up in this playthrough. However, in hindsight, those might have occasionally been helpful. They don't really attack at all. They hardly even move. But they can tank very well when fully upgraded. So maybe in some cases they would have worked better than the Militiamen. And to be clear, the various Fallen Hawk Ashes do not count. As those are more like zombies than skeletons. And they also do not resurrect like skeletons. So the game doesn't recognize them as such. Now you would think that the next order of business would be to pick up Radigan's icon and the Lizette staff for faster casting. But as I've shown before, that hardly makes any difference at all. Regardless, we have another way to increase our damage other than the talisman. Namely by acquiring Golden Vow, which also provides a very helpful defense boost. Speaking of which, a more swell and sweeter suitable suit of armor would provide a nice defense boost as well. So it was about time to trigger Ansha so that when we went back to the round table, we could have a fight around the round table, which is by the way why it's called a round table, because it's a table you go around. Which is a good thing, because taking him head on would result in a bone crunching fight. In fact, even while kiting him around the round table inside of the round table hold, it's already quite an ordeal, because he is such an attractive guy in a sense. Not merely because he looks the part, but given that he understands that I will copy his look, and therefore he understands the gravity of the situation. And speaking of gravity, given that Renala is not feasible, given that we do pure magic damage with this spell, and she has 80% magic resistance, and Rykart is even less feasible, or maybe even impossible, that means that our second Great Wound would have to come from Badan. And yes, I know he's a fan favorite, but if you see my previous videos or were present at the live streams, you know that I've made no bones about the fact that although I greatly appreciate Radan's presentation, and cool factor when it comes to his moveset, I really don't enjoy actually fighting him. Which, in all honesty, at least in part has to do with the fact that I just suck at this fight. And for whatever reason I just cannot get good at it. But to make matters worse, in the most ironic twist of irony, you cannot summon in the Radan fight. Yes, you can summon the NPCs, but not any sort of spirit ashes. So, without our marrow mates to distract the boss, we have nothing to help us out. And doing this fight all bare bones is almost unthinkable. Because not only do we do pathetic damage, meaning there's already an FP issue, 
But remember that due to the lack of tracking of this spell, even a ginormous target like Radon is almost impossible to hit with any level of consistency. Therefore, if I don't break out the Rose's Axe for this one, I would require so many of my trustworthy sedatives that I would be pissed out of my skull and wake up with a massive skull buster. But of course, since the Rose's Summons is a weapon art, it doesn't benefit from the Sorcery Boosting Talisman. So instead, I went for Lloyd's Sword Talisman, which I always get around this point by the way, it's almost a ritual by now. But of course, it's only beneficial as long as you are at full health. And speaking of health, given that I didn't even have levels to spare for mind, I certainly couldn't focus on raising my vigor by that much. So combine that with the fact that I already am very bad at this fight, but now I had to do it with a slow attack. Well, at the very least, there is a massive increase in damage compared to the tibia summons. So that at least would not be the issue. And on top of that, it has another extreme benefit. Because if you get hit while in the attack animation, your own axe swing will be cancelled, but the skeletons will still get their own attacks in. With the Tibia summons, that is not the case. If your casting gets cancelled, the skeletons are cancelled as well. Remember that I'm purposely only using the Rose's axe when there is a good reason for using it, in order to have this challenge be focused around the Tibia summons. Because again, otherwise there would be no conceivable reason to use it over, well, over anything else, to be honest. It seriously has no redeeming qualities. Regardless, even with the high damage output of the Rose's Axe, in my hands against Radan, I would still have to work my fingers to the bone in order to achieve victory. Oh, whoa, he was far. Oh, he doesn't uh, go through this transition anyway, so. I thought I timed that correctly, but apparently I didn't. Yeah, I couldn't get away in time. Eh. Radan and Radagon, uh, those are the two bosses I just have so much trouble learning the moveset from. Oh, no! Fuck! Stupid. That was not smart. And I'm dead, I think. No. I'm not. Oh, really? No! He has half his life bar left. Fuck! There's no way I'm going to be able to uh, get through it now. Okay, that's helpful. Oh, fuck! Uh-oh. I was way too early now. Jesus. Yeah, I, I need to... I tr I've tried to learn uh, Radan's moveset uh, many times, but for some reason I just uh, can't. Okay, that's good RNG. Still two more attacks. Okay, that's good. Yeah, got him. Okay, nice. Oh, I never even uh, never even think about using torrent uh, in this uh, in this fight. That is right. You can use torrent in this fight. All right. Oh, by the way, I completely forgot about even using golden vow. Well, whatever. Well, with that done, we at least don't have to worry about dealing with the power over gravity anymore. Son of a bitch! Well, regardless, the reason we go down into Nokron is because there's one more spirit ash to collect. Namely one that will actually allow us to do more damage rather than merely serving as a distraction. And although it's not a skeleton itself, in fact it doesn't have any bones at all, but given that the mimic mimics whatever you want it to mimic, it will mimic the tibia summons as well. Meaning that we can attack with 6 skeletons rather than 3. Although that's not entirely the case, because the mimic is kind of boneheaded and doesn't understand the rules of the run. You would think that the rules would be as simple as just doing damage with only skeletons. However, it wasn't as simple as that, mainly because I couldn't get that simple principle 
through the Mimic's fixed skull, as you will see later on. But before that, I ran into another issue with the Mimic. However, just like I wouldn't want to rely on the Rose's Axe so much, I also didn't just want to exchange my Cartilage colleagues for the Mimic. I mean, obviously the Skellies are a low tier summons compared to the Mimic, who is, uh, yeah, well, Mimic tier. So I at least wanted to see how one of my female friends would fare against the Chronic Tree Sentinel. He doesn't inflict damage like the Mimic can, but he will charge bravely into battle, so you got to appreciate how he's showing that he has a backbone. But how did he perform? Well, the answer is not very well. In fact, he died twice before getting through 20% of the boss's health bar. And then he got nuzlocked and I got stunlocked by the constant fire spam. Yeah, unlike someone like Godric, this is a boss that moves around and moves around quickly and moreover attacks quickly. So when the hell would it be safe to use a ridiculously slow spell like this? On top of that, it hits like a wet fart, really putting the shard in bone shard. However, maybe the spear skellies would bone hard. Well, they are better at surviving at least. Simply because there are two of them. Meaning that they can act as separate targets. And it's a good thing that these guys are not the joint at the hip bone. However, given the boss's frequent use of AoE attacks, that would only get them so far. And then, I was going solo again. Yeah, you know what? Maybe I would not only be better off with the Mimic, however that would require me to go and collect upgrade materials for it, but I would also be better off with the Magic Scorpion Charm, which provides a 15% damage boost instead of only 4% from the Sorcery Boosting one. Well, for both I would need to go through a part of Rani's questline, so I made my way to Caria Manor. However, that would entail taking on another knight on horseback, but to my surprise, despite our high magic resistance, we did actually really good damage against her. Okay, as long as they keep Loretta still, I can get a lot of damage in. How far am I? Well, the uh, other Skelly boy at least can, can revive. Oh fuck, ah, c crap, not good. Oh, both of them uh, revived. Very good. Uh oh, it's aimed towards me! Unfortunately, this version of Loretta doesn't have a lot of health, so maybe the, the Skelly Boys can finish her off now. Do a Pike Charge! May not be that good, but do a Pike Charge! Go on, kill her! Just one more hit! Think that you have a jar on your head, a solar. Yes, thank you! Very good! Alright, very well done boys. So then I met up with Waifu again to show her my, bo my gratitude for the spirit bell that she so kindly provided me with. But as harsh as it sounds, I wasn't here for her this time. But in order to do Sullivan's quest line to get the magic scorpion charm. Not only because my damage output would get worse and worse when getting into mid and end game, but especially if my summons wouldn't survive, every bit of damage would count if I had to go solo. Uh, speaking of which, I guess this is what happens when you solo Melania too many times for other people. So, after eventually acquiring the Scorpion Charm, I went back to the Draconic Tree Sentinel to give the Mimic a try. Oh, that's right, the Mimic Tier, uh, you summon the Mimic Tier with health. Wait, do I even have enough? I can't use it! I don't have enough health. Really? Well, that's some fuck. <sighs> Crap delicious. Well, at least I inflict more damage now, so maybe the Bone Bros will be sufficient? Well, uh, I can't say I noticed that much of a difference in my damage output. Uh, especially not when you still end up missing your attacks. Yes, I definitely would need the additional attacks from my Replicating Rep Scallion for this fight. And therefore, I went to the other Eternal City to collect more Glove Words. In fact, I was able to upgrade the Mimic to as high as plus 9. And with the poppable runes along the way, I was able to get my health just high enough to summon it. So with the Mimic, it should be easy now, right? Well, not exactly. I mean, as long as both of us are attacking, we are doing a nice amount of damage at least. But as I mentioned before, despite being a shape-shifting blob, he is quite a bonehead and lacks any meaningful AI. He doesn't really avoid attacks, 
and therefore doesn't survive that long. Especially because he cannot resurrect. But it's actually worse than that. Since I had Golden Vow equipped on a dagger. Yes, the Mimic could use Golden Vow as well. But he started attacking with the actual dagger. What the fuck? That's not allowed. Oh fuck! Ah! No! 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 Ooh! Crap, I was right on top of the lightning. Shit, delicious. I was right, and I cannot survive that, uh, that attack. Oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. Mimic is using a dagger? You mean he actually attacks with it? Oh, he did. Oh, I didn't know that. Oh, fuck. So I have to unequip it? Ah, shit. Well, that sucks. This duplicating douchebag is sabotaging my challenge run. So, I would have to unequip the dagger before summoning it. <sighs> Crap, malicious times too. Oh, and uh, on a side note, uh, trying to get to the capital uh, via the gargles was uh, even less effective. And on an even sidle note, I did actually manage to get very close to defeating the sentinel, even though the mimic died an early death. But damn, do you get next to no attack opportunities this way. Making the fight just drag on. <laughs> And uh, mistakes are punished severely. I mean, my HP is still very low, as I only raised it to meet the 660 HP requirement to summon a Mimic with. No, fast one. Shit. Do the big one again. Yeah? Well, I mistimed it! No! That sucks. Now, speaking of HP, given that the Mimic copies anything you have, and Golden Vow on a dagger wouldn't work, I decided to equip a healing spell and get the spell version of Golden Vow. Which definitely was quite an improvement. But would it be enough? Okay, that's nice. I'm getting some damage in. Oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. Okay, second phase. Okay, no, oh, it's staggered. Nice. Oh, hey, whoa. Huh? Hey, but he's staggered. Oh, that was lame. Okay, we're doing good damage together. And the Mimic is more tanky now. Whoa, because of Golden Vow, I think. Or maybe because of the healing, I don't know. Whoa, careful. Don't fuck up now. Okay, we're getting close. Okay, one more hit. Stay still, stand still. Oh, fuck, he didn't. Oh. Ah, fuck. And I'm using the wrong one. Come on, just one more hit. What the fuck? I don't have healing. Uh-oh. I just need one more hit. I just need one more hit. Come on. This is bullshit. Come on, one more hit. He doesn't follow up. Oh, I could have gone for that. Shit. This sucks. I messed up with my flasks. Okay, I'm just going for it. Please stand still. Don't move. Don't move. Yes. Ah. Nice. Delicious. Well, that was a mess. <laughs> I just messed up with all my flasks. I unnecessarily used the uh, healing item. <laughs> all right. Well, at least uh, we made progress. Took like almost an hour. <laughs> but we made progress. <laughs> now, despite having a plus nine mimic... I still wanted to give my vertebrate compadres another try, even though they were only at plus 4. So let's see how well they would perform against Godfrey. Not very well at all. <laughs> but if they can revive, that makes a difference. Okay, now pull your axe slow, yeah, good, because maybe then I'm in time. They're still not in time. That's how slow this spell is. It's really. <laughs> this spell really sucks. Yeah, all the AoEs, that's not good for the Skelly Boys. Now, one of them is permanently dead now. Oh, fuck. That's not good. Okay, if he now targets me, then he can revive again. Because that is definitely very beneficial for when it comes to skeletons, that they can basically just keep reviving as long as they don't get hit while reviving. I think he's now permanently dead. Oh no, still not. Okay, good. Then focus your attention on me.
Oh, now he really is dead. Fuck. So <laughs> I bet I will now not be able to get the final hits in because Godfrey moves around constantly. Unless he does a jump attack, but he hardly ever does that. Okay. Oh, ah, oh, he staggered me. Damn it, he hardly ever does it and he does it immediately after I say it. And I mess it up. So I basically just need to get lucky. Yeah. And oh, by the way, I only have two more attacks. I only have two more attacks. Jesus. Okay, now I'm fucked. Because I need to hit both of them. Damn it, I have no idea when to attack now. Ah, fuck. Yeah, but I can't fight them without lock on. Okay, first get the opportunity. Yeah, but still, it's too slow. Yeah, he dashes away. Doesn't work. So now I don't have enough FP to kill him because I don't think a single hit is enough. Yeah, let's bait the actual jump attack. You know, the what X throw. No, I'm out of FP. Yeah, but Starlight Shard, but that's a waste because. Oh yeah. Okay then. But I still need an uh, attack opportunity. <laughs> Nah. <laughs> it wasn't even enough. I mean, they don't do a lot of damage with their spears, but... Hey, at least they're not using the pike charge. But they are... Yes. Okay, good. They are distracting enough. Very good. Well, that just goes to show how RNG heavy this entire playthrough is. And the boss fights will only become worse. Specifically, since Moog stands between us and the Prince of Death Staff. Since I am still using the unupgradable Meteorite Staff. And the Prince of Death Staff specifically boosts this type of sorcery. But of course, even getting to Moog in the first place requires us to go through... Uh, uh, one of my sort of uh, favorite areas of uh, the game. <sighs> Crap, delicious time three. Sewers are for shit and turtles of the non pope variety. But what's even more shit is my damage output against Moog's absurdly high elemental resistances. Not to mention how little experience I have fighting this boss in the first place. So between us and the Prince of Death Staff stood a massive obstacle. Well, actually, there was a literal physical obstacle in place as well. Because even if I would defeat Moog at this point, Morgoth's seals are in place until you defeat him. Therefore, we were basically forced to take him on first. Oh, nice start. <laughs> oh, he doesn't do the jump, of course, no. Oh, the damage is actually good. Yeah, Morgoth is uh, skilled, rather. Uh Weirdly. For where he is in the game. Because he has relatively little health. And one of my skeletons is permanently dead already. Ooh. Very close to the sort of Damocles. Oh, <laughs> he activated the next stage. Uh, he takes reduced damage now. Oh, maybe not. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Uh, whoa, what the fuck? Well, that's some fuck. Uh-oh. Oh, he's permanently dead now as well. Shit. Fuck, when I am... I'm going to be able to... That, that is basically the only attack that Morgan does that I cannot consistently dodge. And I don't know exactly why. Fuck, this is not, this is not even fast enough. Or slow enough, I should say. Okay, follow up. Yes. No, it's still, it's slow. Or fast. I can't speak. Damn it. Yeah. 
Well, that first attempt looked promising, but there was a major issue in this fight. RNG. Because my attack is so slow, literally no attack opportunity is truly safe. Not even his jump or his bloodsword attacks. Except if Morgoth just happens to not do a follow up or a very specific follow up. Meaning it all came down to luck rather than strategy and I couldn't exactly tank my way through the fight either. And ironically, the mimic performed worse than the chat skeletons. Well, at least for the first phase we do have a secret weapon, even though that's the easier part of the fight, but maybe this would allow the mimic to survive into the second phase. And that's by collecting the market shackle from killing patches. Well, actually you don't even have to kill him, you just get his life bar low enough for... Uh, oh. Oops. What the fuck, this spell is so terrible that when you try to kill someone with it, you can hardly do it. But you instantly kill someone you don't intend to kill. Well, I can't say I feel too bad about that because after all these games, Patches had quite a few skeletons in his closet. But would the market shackle actually allow us to get through the first phase fast enough for the mimic to survive into the second phase? Okay, it's going pretty good. Yeah, stay in place, nice. Oh fuck, FP. Yeah, nice. Oh, <laughs> summon in the air. Okay, I need one attack. Only one attack. So let's make sure I'm at full health just to be safe. If he does jump. Stay in place, please. Yes, I got him. I got him. Nice. Took some really favorable RNG, but we made it work. All right. Hey. Hey, no roses, X. Hey. Good. We don't need no stinking roses, X. Yet. <laughs> Smell my bony ass. Well, just like against Morgoth, we could shackle Moke for some free damage. But then it turned out that the Mimic was dealing illegal damage by bonking the boss with his staff. That's not allowed. What the fuck? I mean, I understood how he would use the dagger. But you would think that he would only use melee attacks with the staff if you don't have any spells equipped. Well, I have no idea how you would prevent him from doing that. Moreover, it's purely detrimental for me. When the mimic wastes valuable casting and, well, surviving time doing only single digit bonking damage. After all, the mimic has unlimited FP and I do not. In fact, I ran out way before Moog went down. Crap, it was going so well, but I don't have enough FP. Yeah, it's my last attack. The only thing I can do now is try to get his attention, but... Oh, the Mimic Tear is almost dead. No, he is dead, so... I don't have enough FP. <laughs> ah. Well, that sucks. Meaning I had to reallocate most of my flasks into Cerulean Tears. Yeah, it's always nice when a boss not only has absurd reach, doing delayed attacks, but also turns the entire floor into a fiery, bloody, raining mess. And then hardly having any healing flesh. So I went to the Turtle Pope for a better healing spell. And hopefully that would be sufficient to make it through this fight. Because I was in desperate need of more efficient staff at this point. Unfortunately the best I could hope for was a better casting tool. You know, staff as in people that... Uh, <sighs> Fuck me, I'm already so tired of this run. Oh fuck, ah, no, not good, not good, not good. I can't get out of it. Crap again. Oh, I got really lucky there.
Okay, final flask. The hardly is any life. I stand still. Good. One more hit. Oh, but the mimic died. No. Yes. Oh, I only had one more attack left. Given the effectiveness of the Lord's heal, it seemed appropriate to get a better seal as well. One that scales with both intelligence and faith. After all, with Moak finally down, I would be able to go down into deeper depths using my perfected parkour powers. And once there, I was able to finally acquire the Prince of Death staff, which not only provides a damage boost to death sorceries, which includes the Tibia summons, because it's going to be the death of me, but it also scales with faith, which I had to level to use this spell in the first place. It upgrades with regular smithing stones, so I went into the mountains for another bell bearing. But when it comes to the bell bearing for grave glove words to upgrade my structural frame familiars, well, uh, I came to the conclusion that those upgrade materials had been quite easily accessible already all this time. Yeah, they were quite unnecessarily still at plus four at this point. So after giving them the appropriate glove words, and milk, I hoped that they would be resilient enough to give me a chance against the fire giant. Oh, oops, <laughs> no, no, don't. Huh? Something isn't right, I cannot cast with my... What the fuck is going on here? I cannot cast. What the hell? Okay, something is not right. Oh, huh? My R1 button is not doing anything. There's evidently something wrong with my R1 button because it's not doing anything. Well, that, uh, that's some fuck. Yeah, my R1 uh, is literally not functioning. Yeah, always nice to have controller issues when doing an already frustrating run. But as I was saying, with my bony Tonys upgraded, would I stand a chance? Son of a bitch! Well, not if I die before them. Yeah, that's another thing. I don't know what was wrong with me, but I was performing so poorly this playthrough. I literally did Nuke Plus 3 on level 1, without relying on any overpowered weapons or status effects. But now I had a way harder time with an actual leveled character. But long story short, it simply was mimic time again. Because let's face it, if I hardly had enough damage output for Moog, there's no way I could get through the Fire Giant's giant health bar. Not even with a battle staff. In fact, I even made sure to gather some more upgrade materials, just to be sure that I would get to... Oh fucking hell, again? What the fuck is wrong with me? Why am I mistiming everything? Oh, by the way, there's a message on the floor. And it says, don't give up skeleton. Oh, wait. Oh, well, uh, that's fucking depressing. And no, I couldn't just go and get a few easy uh, runes to level up. Because by the time you kill the dragon with this attack, I wouldn't even be a skeleton, but a goddamn fucking fossil at that point. Well, there's the night knight that you can make fall off. So that's something at least. But the main thing should be that I should simply play better. Well, eventually I did manage to make it to the second phase. But the Mimic didn't with all the fire AoEs and exploding fireballs and whatnot. I suppose it got a little too hot under the collarbone for him. But that ironically led to me getting chilled to the bones when I realized the obvious problem here. How in the ever-living fuck of Falkenstein could I possibly inflict enough damage even with all the extra upgrades and such? Even if hitting is weak points, and that's one hell of a goddamn fucking ginormous if. Yeah, you'd think that not even this spell could miss a literal giant. <sighs> fucking tibia, bony, tony, chocolony shite. Yeah, just like the average American, this wasn't working out. So, yeah, it was time for the Rosa summons. So, at least now it should be easy, right? But really? Well, let me just go and uh, get a mirror. Yeah, oh, that's very good. <coughs> what the hell is wrong with you? Well, in a weird way, me sucking like there's no tomorrow is kind of appropriate for a bonar themed run. Or rather inappropriate, actually. So, Okay, so I made it to the second phase. But then I realized that except for very specific attacks, like the Firestorm, 
or the people's elbow, even the Rosa summons was too slow to consistently hit the giant's weak points. Fuck delicious. So that entailed that I simply had to go for his legs, or, well, leg. Which does significantly less damage, but at least means that I can get hits in. Ironically, that's how I used to fight them in the early days, after this game was released. Because back then, I didn't yet know how the second phase was supposed to be done. So, I kind of had to adapt on the fly. But at least I had actual attack opportunities now. Surprise, no! motherfucker! Are you kidding me? Seriously? Get the fuck out of here! Ugh. That should not have been that difficult. Jesus fuck, dude. Well, you cannot spell existential crisis without X, I suppose. Ugh. Well, the Fire Giant is not exactly my favorite boss in the game, but the next one on the list is one I truly hate with every bone in my body. And it would entail taking two bosses on at the same time. One fat fuck, or I should say big boned, and the other one is all skin and bones. God skin to be exact. So this was going to be much, much worse than anything I had to deal with so far. And in all fairness, I wasn't expecting much from our spinal sidekicks. And I was not disappointed. Well, I was disappointed, but not disappointed because I expected to be disappointed. Fuck me, that's convoluted. But what I had not expected is that in this fight, you can in fact use the tibia summons through the pillars. So that at least is a massive benefit. Which I think might have to do with the fact that you don't block your vision or disengage the lock-on or whatever it may be. So the first attempt actually went better than I expected. But yeah, this was an obvious Mimic fight. Again. In fact, when it comes to the Mimic, there's another benefit. Namely, that you can equip him with sleep pods. And unlike yours, those are not consumed after they're used. And the Mimic is already doing illegal single digit damage through the occasional bonking. So I was like, yeah, screw the two physical damage from the pod. Well, when you think about it, a pod is essentially the exoskeleton for the liquid that's... It's uh, contained with, within, or something. Yeah, fuck it, this entire run has been a complete mess so far. Unfortunately, there's a lot of RNG involved when it comes to the Mimic using sleep pods. Now, he doesn't attack sleeping enemies per se, but he can attack them while they are falling asleep, which then cancels it. And then there's the randomness of him using them in the first place. Sometimes at the wrong times, or not at all. But at least when things go the way they should, being able to attack only one of them is one hell of a massive benefit. So, as long as we don't run into some sort of uh, massive design flaw, we should be fine, right? Huh? Oh, he cancelled his roll, you know? Oh, and... Fuck! Why is this... Why has that never been fixed? Why has that never been fixed? Why has that never been fixed? They, this is patch 1.06 and they never fixed that. I mean, they could also just remove this entire fight from the from the game, but that's... Uh, I mean, they should know that that's in the game, right? I mean, they fixed the fucking snowfield skip, but they don't fix the roll cancel thing. Oh, hey, there's another message on the floor. And this one says... Good, comma, lock you, skeleton. Wow, they are really messing up these messages. Also, since when is luck spelled with an F? At least I thought that the fight would be doable now, but I cannot emphasize enough how much RNG there's involved with both the Mimic, as with actually connecting the hits from the Tibia Skellies, obviously. Even with the healing spells, sometimes the Mimic would die anyway, early on in the fight. But then, suddenly, luck was on my side, and we had one hell of a run. And the Mimic isn't healing anymore. Surprise, oh fuck off! Ah! What the fuck, dude? No! The Mimic died! Uh-oh. Oh, ooh. What the fuck? 
How the hell am I going to stay alive? But, uh, I'm stuck! Damn it, but I don't have enough FP. I cannot win. I literally cannot win. I don't have enough FP. Fuck. I literally, I don't have enough FP. There's no way I can win. Nah. I need to reallocate my flash. Fuck. Yeah. So, reallocating uh, the majority of my flash into FP was a requirement. But given how easy it is to take damage against these guys, especially because just like healing, casting can trigger the fireballs as well. Uh, at least I could use healing spells myself. But of course, again, that lowers the amount of FP you have for attacks. On top of that, I wasn't getting any decent runs anymore. Except for one that ended about halfway through. Fuck me, this was tiring. So, I ended the stream there. But I decided to do some preparation for the next one. First, I performed the snowfield skip, which has become very convoluted since patch 1.06. And I used gravity to get rid of the invader in order to activate the portal towards Moog's palace. This would provide me with a farming spot that wouldn't be that time consuming. Because if you know anything about me, you know how much I hate farming. Which come to think of it is actually quite ironic for a Dutch guy. But also, it is quite tedious having to do it with skeleton attacks. If only I could summon bone wheel skeletons, now that would be something. But unfortunately those are not in this not 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 in this game. I also went to collect smithing stones number 8 from the uh, yellow tunnel. You know the white blue icy one. Which allowed me to max out my staff. I also made sure to collect the somber stones needed to upgrade my axe and upgrade my seal for better healing. Then I got the better version of the sorcery boosting talisman. In fact, even the intelligence talisman that you can get from on top of the inverted tower, or down, or up, but inverted. I don't know, I just kind of uh, lose the sense of direction here. Uh, more pots for the mimic, and I thought about acquiring Terra Magica beyond the dual Crystallion fight, which I didn't end up doing. But, you know, given how much you have to move around anyway, it probably wouldn't have helped out that much. But most importantly, I went to collect all golden seeds required to max out my flash to get rid of my FP issue. And of course, do a shit on of farming, enough to get me from level 78 to level 100. So when the fourth stream started, it was like going back to the battlefield after a massive training session. So hopefully that would give me the edge I needed, because fuck me is this duo getting under my skin, goddammit. And the first attempt was definitely hopeful. We were dealing around 900 or 1000 damage per attack, as long as all three skeletons connected of course. And both of us were a bit more tanky now with 40 vigor. But even that doesn't have to mean that much against the late game bosses. Especially not because one time mistiming this very long casting animation can end all the process that you've made. Yeah, the thought of doing that now when victory is close at hand sends chills down my spine. No! No, I couldn't move because I was in the animation. Oh, that was so close. <sighs> well, given how well that went, you'd think that the next attempt would have been the successful one. No. Remember, this boss fight is not just bad, it's bad to the bone. And even with this extra boost, it still remains an RNG fuckfest. After all, the mimic can still end up dying way too early in the fight. And that even with all the extra flash and higher damage output, this can still happen. Lock on! Finally. So, maybe I can now finish it. No, fuck! No, not good, not good! I don't have enough damage! I should have attacked the noble. Fuck, I'm stupid. Yeah, but this is my last attack. I don't have enough damage! Do I have a... I don't have anything! I can't attack!
I don't have enough for Rose's summons either. I haven't even equipped it. Yeah. Ugh, fuck. No, perish without dealing the final blow. Not that. Oh, why has destiny conspired against me so tragically? What, the mimic's dead? Jesus, fuck. That's way too early. You know what? Let's just reset. Come on. Ah. <laughs> oh, I'm getting such bad RG. Hey, whoa, whoa. Whoa, what the fuck? Yeah, what the fuck? Oh, fuck this boss fight. You know what? Let's put him to sleep. If I can. What the fuck? Did the screen shake for you as well? Because there was some weird frame build thing. I don't know, the PC version can be a bit fickle at times it seems. Mostly it runs fine, but... Okay, nice. Come on, Mimic, attack with me, please. Fuck, don't, oh. Ooh, I got lucky there. Okay, final, please do it. Yes. Yes. <laughs> oh. oh, what a shit show. What a shit show. Ah, oh. what a despicable boss fight. Ah, my throat is bone dry. Well, at the very least we made it through that fight without having to resort to the Rose's Axe. It would have saved a whole lot of suffering, so I'm not sure whether that's even a good thing. But who knows if the next boss would even be feasible without it. At the very least, we now go from the worst boss fight to one of the best in the entire game. And for a second phase, I at least had a strategy in mind. Although I hadn't tested it out. So it would kind of suck if it turned out not to be possible after all. But of course we would have to survive the first phase first. And that's a really tall order for my Megalovania mates. Because Beast Clergyman is hyper aggressive and extremely maneuverable. Moreover, something else that can prevent them from resurrecting in this particular fight is by falling over the edge. However, the main problem came in the second phase because I thought that I would be able to attack him when he was doing either version of the combo where the second attack is that slow overhead attack. But the Tibia summons is simply too slow even for that. He will either jump away or you won't have the ability to get out of the destined death attack. And that was my only opportunity, even in principle. Because nothing else he could do would ever leave him open long enough. And no, the Blasphemous Claw was neither allowed nor even possible to obtain. Meaning that it would have to come down to pure luck when he's distracted. But I already needed that distraction to get through his first phase. And my summons would rarely survive until the second turning this fight into a nightmare as if Christmas would be the next day. But then, one of them went full chat skeleton mode again. <laughs> this is more luck than anything. Okay, don't... Uh, exactly, don't attack the skeleton now, please. Oh my god, the pillar! Fuck you! Oh, <laughs> Malik have still got out of the way. Oh, and the scout is summoned in the air again. Fuck you. I wonder if there even is a worse spell than this in the game. <laughs> can, uh, can you guys think of a worse spell than the Tibia summons? <laughs> <laughs> Fias missed. Okay, fair enough. Well, Skelly Boy <laughs> alone, because the other one is glitched or fallen off or whatever the hell is going on, is definitely allowing me my damage opportunities. Otherwise, I... Whoa, fuck! No! No! Whoa, no! Whoa, whoa, whoa. Fuck, no! 
Whoa, he went towards me. Whoa. Well, at least I looked cool. What the fuck? I don't get damage in. Fuck. Uh oh, he's coming towards me. I think it's over. <laughs> yeah. Ah. Well, that was close. You have to admit, that was at least very close. But this is pure RNG. There's not even any strategy to it. It's pure RNG, whether or not the skeleton can distract them. And I basically have to attack at random because there is no attack opportunity. That's basically what it comes down to. It's pure fucking RNG. So if I had won there, then that would have been the result. Just pure RNG. Yeah, it sucks, but it was, once again, Rose's time. And that attack was at least quick enough to work in his destined death combo. Either version. Oh, what the hell am I doing? Oh, fuck it. What the hell am I doing? Let's just pretend I'm building up tension. <laughs> oh, what the hell? Did it? What the fuck? No! What the fuck? What the fuck? That was not supposed to happen. Okay, now I got him. <laughs> okay, well... Hey, at least I got... I did build the attention. Not intentionally. Well, let's pretend. Yeah, that was intentional. It was completely calculated. Completely calculated. The entire thing, completely calculated. Hey, you were on the edge of your seat? Well, at least it, uh, it got results then. <laughs> so, the thing with Auto Omniscient is that he can actually be exceptionally difficult doing specific challenge runs. But in my mind, I at least had a strategy to fall back on. Namely, by using the shape of the room to my advantage. After all, there is a sort of safe zone next to the pillars at the back. I mean, I didn't expect to be able to hit them through these pillars, like in the Godskin duo fight. But next to those pillars would give me a clear line of sight. Well, I guess I should have learned from Malekith that making assumptions makes an ass out of... Well, I don't know about you, but at least out of me. And I hadn't even considered the fact that he can do pure holy damage. Yeah, that's only powerful when you yourself are not the one using it. No, it doesn't work. What the hell is even going on? Oh, fuck. Oh. Maybe free aiming? I don't even know. Nah. Fuck, this is not good. Oh, and you can roll out of the way as well. Jesus, fuck, dude. Again, a strategy that I had in mind and that uh, turned out that it doesn't even work. <laughs> or maybe I should just distract Gideon and hopefully uh, the Mimic does... Yeah, you can't really rely on what the Mimic does, to be honest, but... Oh, this isn't going so well. <laughs> oh, ah, oh, cam... Jesus, camera! What the fuck, dude? Oh, whoa, whoa, stupid. Whoa, what the fuck, dude? What the hell? Oh, I had time to roll away. Oh, that's towards me. Or towards the ceiling. Now the... Fuck. Now the Mimic is dead. Come on, just stand still. Stand still. Fuck me. Yeah, I think... Uh, seriously, I am locked onto him. Shut the fuck up. Maybe these pillars won't block them? I don't know. Oh, now it still messes with the lock on. Come on, do it. Just hit them. Unfucking real.
This sucks. Come on, just hit him. <laughs> just hit him. Hit him. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh. Well, at least he is theme appropriate. He knows it in his bones. <laughs> oh my god. What a mess. So now it's the second encounter with Godfrey. However, this version is quite different from the Golden Shade, which already had devastating AoEs. But this time, they become even more devastating, and more importantly, arena-wide against summons who cannot jump. Yeah, he's permanently dead. Fuck, this is not good. Uh, this is a problem. <laughs> Because when the hell do I attack? I mean, each time he goes away, he slides away, then it's a uh, AoE. Yeah, this is not fast enough. Jesus, I have no idea when to attack. Uh, there are no attack opportunities. <laughs> See, even, even when I do it like that, it's uh, not quick enough. Nope. Yeah, that was more luck than anything else. Huh? Seriously, I was already at the end of the animation and he still cancelled it. Fuck you. Yeah, I can't even then. He cancels the attack even at the very last frame of the of the casting animation. What the fuck, dude? So even even if I circle around him and I get the RNG that he, instead of sliding away he does another combo, then still it doesn't work. What the fuck? So even though Redigan's icon and the Lucette staff only make the casting animation a few frames faster. In this particular case, that could be just enough to not have the spell cancelled. Although I would still take damage each time. So obviously the Mimic is going to be necessary to get enough damage in, but he's not much better at surviving, because he also won't jump over the AoEs. And yeah, it might look hilarious, but it's not tickling my funny bone. So I try to turn him into a tank with heavy armor, defense boosting talisman and a shield. Which required me to awkwardly switch my gear out after going through the fork wall, since you cannot summon the mimic outside of it, of course. And I couldn't wear it myself, since it would make me fat roll. And yeah, well, the mimic doesn't roll in the first place. And well, it made a difference, but it simply wasn't sufficient. Regardless, I did finally make it to the second phase. Um, technically, I suppose, in a manner of speaking. This spell is absolute garbage F tier, worthless fucking spell. I think it's axe time, this is not gonna work. Uh oh. No! Oh come on! Really? Okay, that was at least a good start. If he does the jump now, that would be nice. Oh, he does that. Okay, so let's watch out for his hands. <laughs> because apparently that's a hitbox. Ooh.
Yeah, got him. Nice. All right. Even with the accent, uh, it took quite a while, I must say. Now, before we finally end this fuckery filled fuckfest, I got a commonly asked question. What about Melania? Mmm, well. Ah, uh, this isn't right. Wait, this isn't right either. Nope. Ah, uh -uh. negative. Come on, come on, get it right. Wrong. 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 I'm doing yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I beat her off screen. Okay, the fight against Radagon initially seemed to go relatively well. However, there's an obvious problem. Well, there are two problems, but the other one is far less obvious. But the obvious one is that a lot of his attacks are pure holy. So if that's the finishing blow, the Sand Squad goes bye-bye permanently. And when you're left alone, you encounter a less obvious problem. But Radagon can spell parry the Tibia summons. What the actual fuck? Skeletons slashing him from the side and behind can be parried? Unfucking believable. Well, I didn't really give a shit anymore at this point. So I nicely asked him to fuck off. But I did at least want to give the Tibia summons a try against the Elden Beast. I mean, he's a large target and cannot parry anything. However, his defenses against elemental damage are way too high. So I wasn't doing nearly enough damage to it. Meaning I would still run out of FP before I could possibly get through this fight. Especially after Radagon. <sighs> yeah, you know what? This game can suck my boner and I'm done with this shit. Ronnie, some inspiration please.